island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Buzz, buzz. Boko reached the big station and arranged his trunks. Then he went to the shed and asked politely if he could come in. Duck was not pleased to see a diesel, but presently when he found that Boko knew Edward, he became more friendly. And by the time Boko had told him about Bill and Ben, they were laughing together like old friends. Have they ever played tricks on you? asked Boko. Goodness me, yes, chuckled Duck. Edward is the only one who can keep them in order. You know, went on Duck, I sometimes call them the bees. A good name, chuckled Boko. They're terrors when they start buzzing around. Just then, James bustled in. What's that, Duck? Are you terrified of bees? They're only insects after all, so don't let that buzzbox diesel tell you different. His name is Boko and he didn't we... I wouldn't care, interrupted James. If hundreds were swarming round, I'd just blow smoke and make them buzz off. Buzz, 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 retorted Duck. James retired into a huff. James was to pull the express next morning, and when Duck brought his coaches, the platform was crowded. Mind your backs, mind your backs! Two porters were taking a loaded trolley to the front van. Fred drove while Bert walked behind. Careful, Fred, careful! warned Bert, but Fred was in a hurry and didn't listen. Suddenly an old lady appeared in front. Fred stopped dead, but the luggage slid forward and burst the lid of a large white wooden box. Some bees flew out, and just as James came backing down, they began to explore the station. Someone shouted a warning. The platform cleared like magic. The bees were too sleepy to be cross. They found the empty station cold. James's farman was trying to couple the train. They buzzed round him, hopefully. They wanted him to mend their hive. Then they could go back and be warm again. But the farmer didn't understand. He thought they would sting him. He gave a yell, ran back to the cab, and crouched with his jacket over his head. The driver didn't understand either. He swatted at the bees with the shovel. The bees, disappointed, turned their attention to James. James's boiler was nice and warm. The bees swarmed round it happily. Buzz off! Buzz off! he hissed. He made smoke, but the wind blew it away, and the bees stayed. At last, one settled on his hot smoke box. 
it burnt its feet. The bee thought James had stung it on purpose. It stung James back, right on the nose. Eee! Whistled James. He did enough. So did his driver and fireman. They started without waiting for the guard's whistle. They didn't notice till too late, but they'd left their train behind. In the end, it was Boko who pulled the express. He was worried at first about leaving his trucks, but Duck promised to look after them, and so it was arranged. He managed to gain back some of the lost time, and the fat controller was pleased with him. No one seemed to notice when James came back to the shed. They were talking about a new kind of beehive on wheels. It was red, they said. Then they all said, buzz, 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 and laughed a lot. James thought that the big main line engines, they were being fit.